Hi everybody, my name is Marin and welcome to Danny's Workout. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the best stretches for yoga exercise or exercises and workouts in general. A lot of people don't realize how effective and important stretching can be, especially for reducing injury and for increasing the effectiveness of all your workouts and your yoga or any activity you might do regularly. So the stretches that I'm going to show you today are going to focus on your back and your legs, which is pretty much your whole body besides your arms. So the poses or the asanas or stretches that we're going to do is going to really focus on whole body, which is going to really increase your flexibility as well. One of the major things that I like to include in pretty much every single routine stretch or yoga wise that I do is a forward bend, which is just a simple reaching for your toes. Now a lot of people think, I can't do the forward bend, like I can't even touch the ground. And that's okay. You have to start somewhere. In order to increase your flexibility and stretch out your back and legs, it's okay if you're right here and this hurts. And really you don't want it to hurt, you want to feel it, a little tension, a little discomfort. But if it hurts, you should really back up a little bit and just find that place where it's comfortable but slightly uncomfortable for you. There should be no shooting pain, no sharp pain. If you're feeling those things, stop immediately. Make sure you consult a professional. But if this is where you want to start, this is great. This is perfect. Some people don't even feel it in their legs to start off with. Some people feel it in their neck and their back, mid-back, upper back, lower back. Um, and all you want to make sure is that your core stays tight, your back stays upright, and with a big inhale and exhale, bend at the waist keeping the weight evenly distributed between your feet. Now if you get here and you feel like your back is tight, I like to offer up the idea of leading with your chin to your chest and letting gravity take your fingers forward so that you kind of dangle. And if this is too difficult, you can always hug your elbows and just gently dangle here and sway side to side. You'll feel it kind of just work through all those muscles. So another thing that you can do if forward, standing forward bend is too difficult is you can do seated forward bend. I'm not a, as much of a fan about this because I don't feel like you have the help of gravity so you don't really feel that stretch from top to bottom. It's more isolated in the back of your legs. But this is a good one too. Now the next exercise or stretching pose that I really like to incorporate all the time as well is a downward dog. Downward dog just starts off in plank position and with a big inhale and then an exhale you push your torso away from the ground lifting your hips up to the sky and then bringing those heels down to the ground. So this is a really good pose because it gets your calves and it also gets your shoulders and lat area, which I, I think are two places that are very difficult to reach any, in any daily activity or stretches without consciously doing it. So this is a really great place to be for kind of just the upper points and the lower points of your back and your leg. Um, now if this is too difficult for you, you can start off here in plank position, bend your knees slightly, bring your heels off the ground, and just push your torso back. So this is your very downward dog, and if you need to, just slowly focus on extending those legs and pushing those heels to the ground. Now, with every stretch, if you're going to try to deepen your stretch or push yourself further into a stretch, it should always be done gently, and you should always do it on the exhale. That exhale is going to make sure that your core is contracted, protecting your spine as you do so. So if you're here, inhale. Exhale, push into it. Now, if getting on the floor is too difficult for your shoulders or, you know, some people feel that plank position is too difficult, it shouldn't stop you from trying to stretch. You can either get on the wall or something that's stable and not gonna go anywhere. Come into plank position here. Inhale, exhale and push back. So you can get the same effect and just vary it for your fitness level and work up and work up gently. Make sure you don't just jump into it. Make sure you're very confident that you're comfortable where you're at and don't push it too hard. 
You don't want to do something just based on performance. You want to do it so that it's good for you and it's a good foundation for you to continue to better yourself or grow on top of that. So using those two exercise stretches, stretch poses, um, let's make a little flow that you can do every single day and just go through these poses, I say a minimum of three times. If you really want to increase effectiveness and efficiency in your stretches as well as flexibility, you have to hold these poses for a minimum of 30 seconds. If you hold them less than 30 seconds, they feel good, but they might not increase the elasticity in the muscles. So, I like to start breathing up. Big inhale, exhale, find relaxation in this inhale and exhale. <sighs> Trying to relax the shoulders. Sometimes I like to wiggle it out a little bit. And exhale again. With the next one, we're going to exhale and reach towards the ground. So you can either bend from this point, sweeping the ground in front of you, or if you like to do the head drop focusing on that back because you're not as flexible in the legs, I would inhale, exhale, come down here, inhale, exhale, as I let gravity take the lead. So let's just hold this pose for a sec, dangle here if you feel like it, and then if you feel like stretching out and making sure that your back's flat and kind of getting the maximum range of this stretch, you can inhale, Straighten the back, straighten the legs, then exhale, keep that back straight, keep the legs straight, and then focus on bending at the hips. So you can also grab the back of your uh, calves and gently put some pressure there so that there's always tension in the stretch. Focus with your mind on relaxing the calves, relaxing the hamstrings, relaxing the glutes, relaxing the back, but keeping it straight, and then making sure the knees are always soft so that they're not locked out and hyperextending. So once we get here, we can just put our hands down, bend the knees, come back into plank position, and big inhale, exhale into downward dog. So this next pose that I'm gonna throw into the mix is not really a stretch in the back of the legs as much it is as it is in the belly, but it is a compression in the back which is important when you stretch the back. You're gonna in, exhale, and then inhale, up into either upward dog, or you can set yourself down and move into cobra, depending on where your fitness level is. You can also bring your elbows down if that's too much of a stretch for you, and just look up a little bit. And it helps stabilize and increase the effectiveness of your stretch. If you're going forward, you wanna go backward. If you go to one side, you wanna do the other side. So everything comes out even. You're not getting stiff on one side and having it pull the other side. So I like to bring this in here before I go in and do an exhale, right back into another downward dog. And then I like to come here into a plank, walk it up to a forward bend. And then inhale. And then exhale, inhale again, exhale again, before rotating through that whole routine again. So that is a really effective and quick, easy way to get your back, your legs, and a full body flexibility stretch routine. You just rotate through those three poses over and over again until you feel loose and you feel satisfied with how your body's received those poses. If we want to do more isolated stretches, this is really good, especially if you are targeting certain muscle groups or you've done a certain workout where you're particularly sore. One of the things that I really like doing just in the mornings, if I feel like I have a stiff neck or if I want to get better sleep, is to stretch out my neck and my back. So the most effective way to do this is to start seated. When it comes to stretching my neck and back, I really like to make sure that I'm relaxed when I do it because these are really tender, sensitive areas, and if you can't relax fully, then you might not get effectiveness in the stretch. So I like to come here, and because the neck is attached to the back, and you'll notice if you're sore in the neck or sore in the back, the other one is sore as well. 
I like to loosen my neck. So just look up, look down very gently. Do these a couple times. Up and down. And then side to side. Ear to the shoulder, ear to the shoulder. And you can even hold it uh, if you'd like on one side or you can hold it on the other side for as long as you want. You go at your own pace. And then sometimes I like to bring my neck down. It's the way that you're gonna do this, you're gonna gently put your hand behind your head and you're gonna act like you wanna smell your armpit. You're not really going to, but you're just gonna act like it. And with just very gentle pressure and using gravity, your hand is just gonna put some pressure on the back of your head. And that stretch you should feel is from the top of your neck to the base of your neck. So it's a really good stretch if you're particularly tender or you tend to have stiffness here in your neck. So I'll hold this. Big breath. And just like I said before, you always want to hold these at least 30 seconds. I like to say do three sets, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and then 90 seconds each time around. So it's three, it's three minutes per stretch, which is not a long time, especially if you want to increase flexibility in an area or relieve it from any particular tension uh, or stress. So once I get done stretching out my neck, and I'll, you know I can go around doing this just based on how I feel, I'll go ahead and place my the palms of my hands up on my upper thighs and with a straight back lean forward. And if you're particularly sore in your mid back or lower back, you'll feel this. So one of the things that I like to say is if you can't sit cross-legged on the ground or this is too uncomfortable, use a chair. You can sit down on the chair and do the same thing here, like so. So, if you are on the ground, you want to make sure you sw switch legs and do it again too because you're also tagging your singular glute here, depending on which leg is forward or backwards. You'll feel it when you do it. So lean forward, gently relax. Sometimes. I'll drop my chin to my chest and then I'll feel that stretch in my upper back and then I'll lean forward on top of it, keeping, keeping from my neck to my waistline completely straight. The only difference is my chin is dropped to my chest. So you want to make sure you're not slouching into it because that's going to be really bad for your posture. So drop that chin to your chest and then still bend at the waist, keeping the palms of your hands on your upper thighs. And just hold this stretch, again, 30 to 60 seconds. If you really want to get intense about it, do 90 seconds. If it feels too difficult to hold any stretch for that long, you're more than welcome to come out of the stretch for just a brief moment, shake it out, and go back in and complete your 30 to 60 seconds. Now once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and grab my, my knee, bring this hand around, and rotate. Rotation is really good for your spine, especially if you do it with proper form. It relieves a lot of stress, it brings the spine back into alignment, and it feels really good if you're really stiff in the back. Now you don't want to put too much pressure, you don't want to be forceful about this. It's just very gentle, I got very gentle pressure until I feel just a little tension in, in my rotation. And it really feels good. It, it should not hurt at all. Feels really good. And you're gonna exhale when you rotate, protecting that spine. And then when you're done, inhale. And then I like to reach up here. And then I like to reach over to the side because this area can get really tight and it's connected to all of the back muscles. So if you feel really tight here, this is a really good place to be. It's a really good place to check back in uh, periodically because we often forget. We're always so, so uh, conscious with going forward and sitting down and moving forward that we don't take the time to take care of our backs and our sides. And that's where a lot of problems are caused because these things are not even. So we do this side and that side. And one of the things that I really like to do if I'm, if I'm really feeling this and I want to relax more is a lay down. Whew. 
and then I'll bring one knee up for a stretch and then we'll bring another knee up for a stretch and then we'll hug our knees and then rotate one way big exhale looking away on the other side keeping that shoulder down tight core inhale bring it up exhale look the other way good and then if you feel like it you can fall asleep right here or take the time to just relax let your body melt into those stretches so I'm going to share with you now some really intensive stretches to focus on the legs. We did the forward bend, we did the downward dog, but now we want to tag all around a little bit more to make it a thorough leg stretch. One of my favorite stretches is to do the wide-legged forward bend. So all it is is wide leg, and same concept as a forward bend. You're just going to bend at the waist and reach downwards. This is going to trigger not the complete back of your hamstrings, but kind of your inner hamstrings which is a little bit different than the back hamstrings. If you don't stretch out both, one is not going to be as flexible as the other. So this is a really good place to be. And if I get here, I will, I'll also reach down into Buddha Stupa pose, but instead of keeping my hands here, I'll put a little pressure on the inner knees and sit down, really sink down into this stretch. This really gets the hip flexors really well and it tags them both at the same time without having to get into the plank position like in the low lunge. So it's not as deep as a low lunge. It can be if you go down into it, but I feel like it's very effective to start with as well as tagging both at the same time. So right here and right here. Really good stretches. In combination with the forward bend and the downward dog, this is going to get your legs really good. So now that we've learned about all these stretches, let's put them together in a really quick routine that you can do every day or you can break up into different parts depending on what you need for yourself. But let's put them into a routine so that we, way we can have a good go at all of them at once. So let's go ahead and start. I'm just going to start. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale. Exhale. And let's go ahead and forward bend. And gently into it. If you need to dangle, dangle. Let's hold it here. Good. Keep your breath really deep. Exhale. Keeping that core tight. Make sure your knees are soft. You can rock a little bit and feel the weight distributing between your feet. You can also grab your ankles or the back of your calves and put a little pressure. Let's go ahead and inhale. Straightening our back and our legs. Then exhale. Coming back into that stretch. If you need to, hold on to your elbows or drop your arms and just dangle them side to side. Sometimes I also like to bend my knees and bring my hands flat on the ground and just focus on standing up. So I don't go, I don't get all the way straight, but I just focus on standing up and you'll feel that stretch move into the, the glutes and the upper hamstrings. Now let's go ahead. Put our hands on the ground, step back, nice big inhale, then exhale into downward dog. Good. Now you can feel free to rock or kind of walk your way into this. Again, if you're right here, that's fine. Just do whatever feels comfortable for you. I really like walking into this. I feel like I feel it in my outer glutes as well when I do that. And then sometimes I'll inhale and soften a little bit. And then exhale, pushing back into it. And then I feel it in my calves as well. And I'll get one calf by walking one out, one knee out, and the other calf by going ahead and walking the other knee out. Gently, gently cycling, continuing to push my torso out, continuing to lift my hips up towards the ceiling, but focusing on walking my heels down into the ground. Great. Nice big inhale as we go into. Upward dog. Oh, and if you need to, go back into cobra by lowering yourself and bringing your hands out in front of you. You can do as much pressure or as little pressure as you want. You can look forward, deepen that stretch by looking up. Nice compression in lower back here. 
And I'm stretching in the core. And let's go head back up into plank position. Exhale into downward dog again. So when you do kind of stretches forward and backwards like this, you're able to tag both areas twice again. So you see this is our second time in downward dog. And it probably feels a lot nicer than the first time, but you can still walk into it. You never have to just be still in your stretch. You definitely do not want to bounce. Uh, bouncing can tear muscles and go backwards. You, instead of making you more flexible, you can make yourself tighter by tearing your ligaments. So you want to make sure everything is soft and gentle. You don't push anything. And then let's walk up to our hands. And go ahead and be in this forward bend again. So this is really good for your back and your legs. Just increasing flexibility overall. This is one of the best stretches that you can do for that. And in combination with the downward dog and the cobra or upward dog, you really get a full body stretch just going forward and backwards there. Let's inhale, straighten the back of the legs, exhale. Bring yourself further into the stretch. Focus on relaxing the calves, relaxing the hamstrings, relaxing your glutes, relax your back, relax your neck. Just bring your mind to your whole body here. And then let's go ahead and inhale, standing up. Exhale. Inhale, stand up again. And then let's go ahead and straddle our legs out. And then as we inhale one more time, Exhale, doing a forward bend with wide leg. So you need to walk out a little bit more and sit into it. You'll feel that stretch. Really get up into your inner groin here and your inner, ham, inner hamstrings here in the back. And then what I like to do is I kind of like to lean forward into my hands and rock back into my legs. So let me show you here off to the side. So lean forward and then bring my weight back in, pushing my hips. Same concept as downward dog, lifting my hips up and kind of pushing my torso into my hips there as my heels are planted firmly onto the floor. You can focus also, straighten the back and then bend again with a straight back. Really sit in that stretch. You can kind of Bend each knee, rock side to side, or wiggle your butt side to side just a little bit and feel it tighten on one side and move to the other side and feel it tighten on the other side. Just kind of waking up those muscles. And then let's go ahead and inhale, stand up, and then exhale, sit down into the Buddha stupa, but with our hands gently placed on our inner thighs here. Just gentle pressure. You can go here, you can go here, and just sit into it. You can move your feet, just kind of be active in your stretch. And if you feel like you want to, you can push around and twist a little bit. Love this, it really gets my shoulder blades, it really gets my upper back. And then the other side too. Looking back, keeping that core tight and exhaling as you twist. And then breathe in and exhale, coming back down into that wide-legged forward bend. If you want to get a really good shoulder and back stretch here, you can clasp your hands behind your back, lift them up over your head, and you're really going to feel that stretch in the shoulders and the biceps. This is a really good way to incorporate another stretch in what you're already doing which is going to maximize your efficiency over time because you're stretching so many parts of your body at the same time, which is really increasing the flexibility and the blood flow, as well as reducing your stretching time. So once I get here, I'll just go ahead and prop down, sitting on the ground, inhale, finding relaxation, exhale, bringing my chin to my chest. Do this as many times as you like. Hold it for as long as you like, if you feel like you need it, side to side. And again, you can hold this on each side for as much as you want, or you can just continue to teeter back and forth, depending on if you feel like you need something more active or more passive. And then I can go ahead and bring my head down, 
to my armpit. This is not pulling. Again, it's just the weight of your hand working with gravity to put a little tension on the back of your neck there. Stretching from the top of your neck all the way down to the base. And if you want to deepen that stretch, bring this hand and bring it back down here, just right behind your thigh. And you'll feel a little more of that stretch in that neck. Other side now. Very good. Keep your breaths real deep here. Hopefully you put on deodorant. <laughs> And just try to find that relaxation. Again, if you can't sit on the ground, you're more than welcome to do this on a chair. You don't have to have your legs crossed for this. So let's go ahead and inhale. Exhale. Lean forward. Put our hands here. And if you want to, you can drop your chin to your chest. Keep that back straight still. Bend at the waist to get more of a back stretch, less of a glute stretch. You should feel it in your back. It should feel like a mild ache if you are tense. And then don't forget to swap legs if you're here on the ground. And it's really working. I know, you know, one of the things when I first started stretching that I used to say to myself is, this is so uncomfortable. I, I don't know if I can do this every day consistently. But I said, you know, I'll give it a try. And let's go ahead and stretch, uh, rotate, do our rotating here. And I said, I'll give it a try and, and see how it works. And it really, within a week, I started feeling better. And within two weeks, it actually started feeling good. So just keep at it and just don't quit. As long as you stay consistent, it's better to stay consistent than have to go through kind of the initial discomfort period. Even if you're just mildly briefing over these stretches regularly instead of going to a full-blown you know yoga routine that's totally fine you just want to make sure that you stay consistent because the body likes consistency the body likes re regular regularity so as long as you're doing that in your stretches you're going to find that the body's really forgiving let's go ahead and lay down and bring that knee to the chest in the wind green pose so do what feels good, and then when you feel ready, you know, you can challenge yourself a bit more, but constantly make sure that you check back in with your body. Make sure that you're giving it these stretches. Even if you feel like you don't need them, I mean, that's even better. If you feel like you don't need them and you can breeze through them, that's so much more easy, so much easier to stay on top of than not doing it and then waiting until you have to stretch for an hour to feel good again. So you're better off doing it for five to ten minutes a day, every other day, than neglecting it. So make sure this shoulder over here is down, hand you can put flat or palm up, doesn't matter. And then if you want, if putting this, hinging your foot onto your knee here is too difficult, unhinge it, form a 90 degree angle with your knee and then rotate it over. And then if that's too difficult too, you can do 90 degree with both knees and rotate it over. Looking away from your knees. I like the really deep stretch though. It feels really good to me. I feel it. Sometimes my spine just click, 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 click. And it feels so good. And then let's go ahead and rotate to the other side. Look away. Shoulder down. Big deep inhales. And when you're ready, you can go back into rotating each side again. Or go back into the whimpering pose. But when you're done, stay here. Stay a while. Just wait a minute. Feel how good it feels to breathe into your body. Give yourself thanks for all the work that you did. Know that you did good work. Know that your body is receiving this in a very good way. And just stay here before you get up and start your day, before you get up and start thinking and moving and stressing about things and planning. Just stay right here and feel good. And if you are afraid that you're going to fall asleep, set an alarm. Let yourself fall asleep. You are going to feel so much more focused, so much more relaxed through the rest of your day. It is worth the extra couple minutes to stay here and really receive all that stretching. 
So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to learn about stretching and the effectiveness of stretching, as well as that really quick stretch routine here on Danny's workout. If you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel. We do a lot of yoga, exercise, fitness, and dance videos, and so much more. If you like the video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button down here on the corner of the screen. And if you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comment box below. I really enjoy you guys being here. Love your feedback. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, if you have any special requests. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.